I want everybody from this moment on to recognize me as the scholar of boxing. Yeah, that's it, Tim. Oh, the ropes got hit the the right hand. Most people don't know shit about that. At all. You know what you were looking for? I want people to understand this. Kids, you He's been the best pound for pound for a long, unbroken time, right? In boxing. And then he put distance between himself and everyone else. He's like this and everyone else is below him. Floyd was in his prime when Roy was in Roy's prime for years and years and years. Not a single person on earth ever even wondered, is Floyd as good as Roy? You understand how good Roy Jones was? It's like when Jordan was in his prime and Shaq was coming up and no one ever asked, is Shaq as good as Jordan? Then the day Jordan retires, Shaq puts that same distance between him and everyone else. That's who Jordan was. That's who Roy was. He put distance between him and Floyd, like Floyd puts more distance even than Floyd puts between him and everyone else. Roy was the best I'd ever seen in person with my own eyes. They couldn't touch With knockout power. With just go, listen, just go look at old clips of Roy. I'm not talking about from 10 years ago. I'm talking about from 15 years ago. This is how good Roy was. Remember when Mike Tyson knocked out Michael Spinks? Yeah. This is the distant past. Everyone thought Mike Tyson, they wouldn't say it out loud, but he's going to be the greatest fighter ever. He's going to be better than Ali. He's going to be better than Sugar Ray Robinson. He's going to be the greatest ever. That's what people were thinking, and the old-timers wouldn't say it, but they, everyone was thinking it. If I told you on that night that there is an amateur junior middleweight who is never going to come close to really losing a fight, should want a gold medal, got ripped off. Win titles at middleweight, super middleweight. Jump up to he light heavyweight. Jump up to heavyweight against John Ruiz. Beat a top five heavyweight and one day open two to one to beat Mike Tyson. You would say that, that's not possible. You're describing the best fighter ever. That's how we perceived Roy Jones the night he beat John Ruiz. This guy may challenge Sugar Ray Robinson for the number one pound for pound spot of all time. Although Floyd Mayweather from the Midwest and he fights at the shoulder road, he gets a lot of comparisons to James Tony. But actually, if you really, really look at the way they fought, he fights more closer to Roy Jones. And an old school person told me that a long time ago, and I had to go to the film. And when I went to the film, I'm like, he's right. Roy Jones doesn't use his jab a lot, neither does Floyd. Not saying they don't use it at all, but they don't use their jab a lot. They're very similar in that. They throw a lot of power shots. They like to counter punch you with very really hard shots. Everything's with, thrown with bad intentions. I mean, it's a lot of similarities. They like you to lower your punch volume, but they have a lot of similarities. And I'm going to take you through this video on uh, the similarities that they did have. And at the end, I'm going to reveal who I think is a better fighter. Step over and steal that right. Step over and steal that right here. Lead the step over and steal the right hand lead was with their main tool, and they could even stop you to the body. Look, both of them using it after they've effectively set it up to the head, using it to stop their opponent to the body with the right hand. So they have that similarity. But Roy Jones' intelligence was very underrated. Right here, this is a Jersey Joe Walcott move. Walcott move. Right there, he puts his hands on his belt and he tries to get his opponent to look down so he can distract him for a split second and land the left foot. But these are subtle things you might not notice if you don't know what you're looking at. But if you notice in this film right here, uh, Floyd Mayweather stabbing uh, Diego Corrales to the body. He's trying to set up the, the left hook to the head. Contrary to people's belief, this was a very difficult fight for Floyd Mayweather, but he won this fight with eye things. Like right here, he has his jab down, looks down to the body, where his vision is, and then the guy assumes that he's going to the body, and then he brings the right hand up top. But at an elite level, you can't do just one thing. It's a multiple things. Right here, he looks him up top and throws the left hook up top. Then after Corrales is used to him looking up top, what does Floyd Mayweather do? Look up top and stab him back downstairs. But listen to Floyd talk about his lead right. Example, lead right hands, lead hooks. Give us a little illustration of that. Well, the lead right hand is just, um, I try to catch a guy off balance, basically. Mm -hmm. A guy can be like this fight. Most guys fight in the rhythm, like, I try not to fight in the rhythm. I try to change my rhythm up. So, and so when, if they don't know my rhythm, I'm able to, I'm able to steal my right hands. Mm -hmm. It says shots up far as like, if I, if I do like this, like, if I do like this. I, I, I may, or sometimes I, I may be like this. And just leave with it. Right. To where he won't know. So keeping his opponents off balance with eye things and uh, rhythm changes. Look here, he doesn't even throw a punch. Mm -hmm. He focuses up top and then looks downstairs. He just fainting them. He's not even throwing punches at this point. He's keeping them guessing and keeping them off balance. 
and if he can't prepare for an attack, he doesn't know when it's coming. So right here, he holds his left hand up and then stabs him to the body. Takes a walk so his opponent doesn't know his rhythm, and now he has his hand low, like he's gonna stab him to the body. And his opponent anticipates the body shot and goes to block it and for it just catches him with a left hook over the top. Here's another angle of his opponent being deceived. Look, he tries to go to block the body shot and then the hook comes right through and ends up knocking him down. So like I said, Floyd Mayweather, of course, everybody knows very high IQ, but listen to Roy Jones do the same thing. Um, actually, I set him up with a jab, head jab by the, I kept jabbing up, jab down, jab up, jab down. I noticed in the Tony fight that when you throw one or two punches at him and get him used to him, he won't react to it, no movement after that. So I set him up and made him get locked to after the jab down. I jabbed up and fake jab down and came with a hook instead. Super high. It seemed about, oh. Right here, notice that Roy shows him the jab, right? Shows him the jab and then turns the jab into a left hook. And then he gets defensive with the left hook. And why he's defensive up top, Roy hits him to the body. It's a normal move, but he doubles the hook to the body. Like I said, Roy played high speed chess because he was not only intelligent, but he had uh, the reflexes and the, the fast twitch. Like right here, look, he touches his jab, right? Touches his jab and he shoots the body, just like the combination earlier. But when this guy goes to counter with his jab of his own, Roy Jones just reaches back and comes over the top of it with a right hand. Beautiful. So while this might be controversial, I'm gonna go with Roy on this one because he had the IQ of a Mayweather, but it would be Mayweather with knockout power. Look right here, shows the guy the jab, turns it into a hook, and the guy is drunk at this point and throwing a hook of his own. And what does Roy do? Take a little off step back, throws a left hook and a right uppercut, and it's all she wrote. Like I said, it would be like a counter puncher that, that can knock you out with counters. That's why people kept their hands in their pocket with Roy Jones, because not only was he a devastating puncher, but he was also a thinker and very, very underrated in his prime. Um, a lot of people don't even recognize uh, Roy Jones is undisputed, but he was because I can remember during the time people were saying Roy Jones wouldn't fight nobody, even though he beat the likes of a James Tony. But when you stack up resumes and you stack up, up prime for prime, I just personally, in my opinion, think that Roy Jones is better than uh, Floyd Mayweather. It, I feel like he has everything that Floyd Mayweather has plus more in his prime. But I think that people uh, tend to judge Roy harshly because they've seen him knocked out before but if you take like a, like I said like a prime for prime and you put him in there it's exactly what Max said but they are very very identical fighters if you look at like uh, what I said the amount of jabs they would use the percentage of power punches that they would use how they were both counter punches etc etc he fought Floyd fought more like Roy Jones and James Tony but I think that um Roy Jones was just a better version of uh Mayweather and I know people aren't going to get that because they just started watching boxing when Mayweather came around but if you miss Roy's prime man you, you did yourself an injustice that man was very special and he wasn't appreciated and uh, even to this day they don't appreciate what Roy did there that's why he's always uh, chanting out his uh, his accomplishments and what he's did in the ring because people overlook Roy because like I said that he's judged by his Tarver fight but he was disrespected as a fighter and he's disrespected now as a trainer if you look at how people talk about, oh, you know, Roy's teaching fighters to fight like him, the strategy that he just pulled off in his video was that any boxer could do it at any skill level. They just have to have a, a high IQ and go and execute the game plan. So Roy's uh, IQ is very, very uh, underrated because people see the flash and the talent and they think that's all Roy was, but he was much more than that. And I think he's disrespected as a trainer and I think he's disrespected as a fighter. So this is me putting respect on Roy's name. Anyway, it's the Boxer Scholar, and I'm out.